morning, Karibu sana to Y254 TV. This being on Thursday, the 15th of February 2024. We are glad to have you today. We are doing Thursday Vibes where we're doing lifestyle music and lifestyle plus health. Yeah, I think we note that we changed from um, entertainment, that is spot on tech, to health segment. Spot on tech moved to Tuesday and we are now calling it innovations. But now on Thursday, we are having health lifestyle and music that's what we're going to be covering every thursday at y in the morning my name is grace Mainge. we are glad that you could make time for us this morning we are very happy I, I also saw mm -hmm. our first conversation of the day jana mulienda wapi niliwacha asubuhi wengine mnanembea oh oh mkona plants oh wengine mnanembea mko mnaenda dinner i saw the comments coming in so nataka kuwauliza how was yesterday ni wewe ndo nakuongelesha eh wewe wewe nani wewe eh how was yesterday i hope mli enjoy with your family loved ones and friends at least sai pressure imepungua kidogo tupumzike wewe jana mlitoonyesha vitu huko kwa hii barabara i i walked past town uh, like i just happened to walk in uh uko town katikati and we he kumbe watu mnapenda nanga siku moja niliwaona niliwaona i saw you guys i saw you guys but anyway it's so nice to have you this morning i want you to uh, i want to let you know how you can reach us on our social media handles at y254 channel on facebook instagram and twitter that is x formerly twitter Leo, niko na a couple of things I would want to say. Of course, I have a guest. I have a I have conversations on uh, on health. That is Matthew's health. Then I have another conversation on um, music and lifestyle. Na ukiona kidogo kuko na mtu ana preview hapo nyuma yangu ka sneak peek kidogo hivi ni kama nimewaletea ka DJ hapa kidogo. Our producer decided to do that thing. So today we have you got we've got you back to back to back but wakati wa entertainment ikifika tutafanya ile kitu let's first start with health matters what is preventive health care mara yako ya kwanza kusikia preventive health care maybe i don't know maybe kama mimi or kama wewe i don't know but we have a guest in studio dr michael munga who is going to be talking to us about matters preventive health care karibu sana daktari thank you very much it's so good to have you Ah, uh, it's also good to be had <laughs> to be here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. Yeah. So, Dr. Terry, let me, let's just start from what is preventive healthcare? Uh, preventive healthcare has two components. So, one is uh, is what we call like um, like to like as well says to prevent disease. And now, for those who are already sick, to prevent the progression of the disease to something worse. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say like someone is a uh, HIV negative, mm -hmm. so you prevent yourself from getting HIV. HIV. If you're already HIV uh, positive, now you prevent, like you prevent the progression to maybe getting TB or all those other opportunistic infections. Mm -hmm. So preventive is just two parts. So prevention of getting the disease in the first place, and also prevention of the progression of already uh, existing disease. So. Uh, what we deal with is essentially like, uh, so there's the infectious part and then there is the lifestyle part. So we have the lifestyle diseases, for example, like uh, diabetes, mm -hmm. we have uh, hypertension, and then we have the infectious ones, for example, like STDs, uh, which are majorly the youth are the ones who are <laughs> majorly targeted. category. <laughs> 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 Especially after Jana. <laughs> 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 yes. So now there are those two parts. So uh, I, I feel like uh, it's a very big topic, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a uh, one. Like, but we can I can just try to narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for example, for the lifestyle uh, diseases, we have like the things you can do to uh, prevent yourself from getting them in the first place. So uh, the lifestyle which I'm going to classify, like uh, maybe the hypertension, which Maybe most of our, uh, I'll say most of maybe the older generation, like people you know, relatives, maybe friends, already have them. So uh, there are things you can do maybe to prevent there, uh, mm -hmm. like for from yourself, uh, for prevent yourself from getting there. So for example, like uh, you can be going for health checkups. So if you are below 50, you can be going for a checkup uh, every three years. For those who are above 50, uh, every one year. 
Uh, so also another thing is weight. Weight is a very big factor to uh, like, which causes a lot of infection, uh, a lot of these diseases like the lifestyle ones. So if you are overweight or if you are obese, you can start by losing weight, uh, exercising, eating healthy, uh, avoiding those junk foods and everything. Uh, also being mentally well, you know, most of us are not mentally. You can come to like in your package or so. I think also like mentally, people need to be like uh, healthy. Uh, when it comes to eating, people need to eat well. Uh, when it comes to uh, maybe sleep, get enough sleep. Mm. Yeah, all those things. Now when it comes to the infectious ones, uh, is the things like your old stone. Uh, if you're maybe in a matatu, you open the window. It reminds me of COVID. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, or use a mask, uh, mm -hmm. for example, those things. Uh, also, like, you can, you can say things like... Um, Probably like um, if maybe you are sexually active, use of condoms, knowing your, the status of your partner. Nowadays things have evolved, they're not like, you know, uh, mm. those days. Nowadays you have things which are maybe like PrEP, which, mm. is, uh, which can be used for people who, who maybe are engaging in unprotected sex, but they don't know maybe the status of the other person, they don't, they don't use condoms. Mm. So they have all those options. So it's a very big uh, area, but essentially in Ile, una, if you're being told Dikinge before, mm. before Fike, maybe to the, to the bad side. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, um, uh, where I work, like uh, nowadays we shall have like these things we do, like uh, what you call annual checkups. So you come and then you are, your heart is checked. Mm. Uh, like you, you, we do so many things like, uh, so the things we call like ECG, which is about the heart. We check your weight, check your height, we check your blood pressure, we mm -hmm. check everything. So from those things, you can be, we do labs. So most of the people are very surprised, like, oh, hiya, kumbe, my cholesterol is high or something. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, preventive healthcare is something which should be done more before we get to the side where you're already infected. Mm -hmm. Because the disease burden is usually way higher. So for example, uh, you find like someone who, um, someone like uh, maybe a 50, and above your yeah, own male. So we are usually uh, two to come for, even even women uh, who are sexually active, so they're two to come for screening, cancer screening. So we have, we have all, I know like we've all heard about the stages of cancer, like mm. stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, and all those. So you find like most people who come, and maybe they are told, oh, you have cancer. They didn't even know like they had cancer. So you find like treatment at that point is easier. Mm. But if you are to wait until now, you start seeing the symptoms, like maybe start losing weight. You are like, I haven't explained, you know, like, mm -hmm. I explained, I have a scare, like, I don't know. So even by the time you are coming, maybe it's at stage four. And that's why people are start, start saying, like, hey, that person looks very healthy. Actually, I don't I can't believe that they're dying of cancer or something. Mm. So I feel like people need to come for those, like, checkups. Uh, if, if, if you have insurance, the better. Because <laughs> sometimes it can be expensive. Yeah, but... Uh, People need to get their health checked, like, uh, mm -hmm. and also check mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, especially young people, uh -huh. uh, if you feel like uh, you, 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 young people feel like, oh, I'm invincible, like I'm very strong, I don't need all those things. Mm -hmm. But there are things like you need to do as a young person. You need to actually exercise. You need to check your weight. You need to check your eating. Uh, I know maybe most of let us. Let me just. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. let me let me just cut you short a yeah. bit. Yeah. What do you mean by mm. it's healthy? Mm. Because mm. it's healthy is mm. relative. Yes. Mimi, because yeah. it's like you get like what's happening na ni kona skuma ibi na na mayaya or something. Yeah. That might be my. <laughs> 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 that might yeah. be my definition of healthy. eating healthy. Yes. So what do you mean from mm. from an expert's yeah. point of view? Yes. What do you mean by eating healthy? Because probably mm. someone ana fikiria kuto mm. zaidi ni kosa ni ame kula too healthy ame uliza tu skuma mm. kando you know yeah. So uh, eating healthy is uh, one, it uh, involves like eating whole foods. So you see like those traditional foods like people like used to think like they are for the poor. Nowadays like, uh, <laughs> like you're, you're being encouraged to eat them. So for example, things like arrow roots, uh, these are sweet potatoes, anything um, whole maize, like wholemeal maize, uh, greens, fruits, uh, meat, Actually, there's a, if you talk to a nutritionist, they usually like, a, like how you're supposed to portion your food. So uh, it's all about eating the whole foods, eating minimally. So 
you can eat the whole foods, but now if you eat a lot, if you eat maybe like you take like 10 eggs and then you <laughs> eat. <laughs> so you're going to have what you call excess calories. Mm -hmm. And then your, maybe your weight is going to be affected. So what you talk about is uh, you eat like a, you don't overeat, but eat the right food. So if you maybe like a, if you have an option of eating like probably uh, the whole to gali and the maybe brown gamba the whole meal gali, mm -hmm. you probably go for the whole meal gali. Mm -hmm. If you have an option of maybe eating mandazi, uh, but you have like sweet potatoes, you go for the sweet potatoes. Because what you, you see with processed foods, like they have removed like the major nutrients, mm -hmm. but with the other foods, you have uh, like the when they come home, they come with all the nutrients. And one thing people don't know is that actually most of the drugs we have in the in the market, they come from plants. So they have been removed from plants, and then they have been processed to become medicine. So food is medicine in the first place. So that's why that's what I meant by saying like you eat healthy, mm -hmm. yes, ah. and also drink water. So instead of soda, drink water. But I'm feeling like I'm already on Galicia. I tell you, baby. I just feel like you're talking to me because I, I had to take, I think yesterday, so I had to see yesterday yeah. that I took soda. Yeah. I, I think I have realized that I'm taking soda every single day. Yeah, now you should use like now. Okay, uh, another thing is now you should not like avoid all these things. You, you know you all have cravings and everything. You should mm -hmm. not like avoid them in totality. Mm -hmm. But it's all about like a, um, balance, having a balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you can take soda once in a while. You can maybe eat that uh, chicken, you know, like that fried chicken once in a while. But uh, you don't have to do it like every day. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the more you do it, the more you, uh, you're harming your health. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, in, in those like processed foods and everything, we have things that are <laughs> scientifically they are called free radicals. Uh -huh. So those are the ones which go to damage your cells. So if you do so, like so much of that, so like many, many times, you're, you're causing more harm than, than good. Another thing is to avoid is uh, alcohol, smoking, mm -hmm. yeah, those lifestyle, you know, those are lifestyle modifications. Mm -hmm. Especially if smoking and uh, alcohol, those ones are, if you can be able to quit, then you are on the pathway to living a long life. But if you cannot be able to quit, you reduce the consumption. I hope volume is clear. Po. <laughs> 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 yeah, but sometimes like, you know, like, if you are not able to like uh, quit, mm -hmm. then what you do is you just you just reduce or maybe just do it like once in a while because you know everyone is built different so there are people like if you tell them to quit something they are like hey. like i know of a very old man he's been smoking his whole life but he's still alive <laughs> so it's a it's yeah. a wonder but now he used to smoke and drink alcohol but nowadays he stopped alcohol now he's because now he, he, he himself even like discovered the the bad um, mm. effects of the alcohol so i'm just saying like it's person person to basis but also it's not good for your health what what's the importance of preventive health care? Uh, okay, uh, personally, uh, it leads to a maybe a better standard of life. Mm -hmm. You feel better, you sleep better, you wake up feeling fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, you like even your mood is improved. On a maybe on a country level, everything it reduces like even the burden on the country. So the cost of medication reduced. Uh, even personally, the cost of medication reduced because you now you see like for example some someone maybe some people people of the same age, one is healthy, one does uh, one has a disease like you're spending money mm -hmm. treating your and you know med medication is not cheap, like mm -hmm. it's very expensive. I feel like uh, if you you're on chronic medication like the money you spend per month is a lot of money, so uh, it also like reduces cost on your on your part, it gives you a longer life, so the, I think the benefits are so many. Uh, compared to what you have on the other side, yeah. Ah, <laughs> yes. amazing. So you 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 said something mm. about um, keeping fit. Yes. You said something um, about weight and yes. all that. Yes. Now, for this person yeah. who is feeling like me, na feel too niko sawa. Like, for example, mm. I, let me speak for myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just realized yeah. that I am ob almost. I was almost obese, yeah. but now I don't feel like that is a problem. Yes. How how do I get help? Uh, okay, uh, as I was saying, this so like everyone is uh, like individually tailored. If you use this like uh, what you call BMI, which is mm -hmm. the body mass index and everything, maybe it is going to tell you are obese or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe for some who plays like rugby, they are going to be told they are obese and they are not. So what I would say is uh, like you have to keep. You have to keep active. You don't have to be like uh, someone who goes to the gym. Just keep active. 
And the best way to stay active is, uh, most of the time, is just by walking. Walking is so underrated, actually. So uh, if you if you able to walk like daily, uh, you don't stay stagnant in one place. You walk from here, to, like to there. If you have a car, drop your car, walk somewhere else. Like that's just enough exercise. So uh, people like you should for people like of young age, you should get at least like 60 minutes of exercise daily. So that's like 60 minutes of walking. Or if you can run, you can run. Uh, also, you should combine that with what you call um, um, muscle like muscle building or what you call a Okay, you don't have to go to the gym. You can do what you call calisthenics. calisthenics. So mm -hmm. you just work out in the house. You do the press ups and everything. So just stay active. Instead of getting that uh, person to come and wash your house, uh, just do it yourself. <laughs> so hey, it's yeah, all about staying active. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's not. It's, it's not giving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not giving. Yes. Yeah, I want someone to help me wash. Hey, that yeah. is not giving. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah, you're just staying active. If you look at maybe people from uh, maybe a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. if even if you see pictures maybe from a hundred years ago, you don't see anybody like a uh, big. At I mean, personally, I'm struggling like losing weight because in the Fikamahali, I'm like, huh? But now I'm saying like, uh, you don't see people who are because who are like obese or something because mm -hmm. those days we didn't have like. Uh, people who are like just in the office the whole day, they just sit down. Or maybe if you want to uh, move from town to maybe Upper Hill, you just, you just take a mile instead of walking. People used to walk a lot and ride bicycles. So it's all about staying active. Wow. Yes. Does, does, um, that, that, that has provoked a thought mm. in my mind. Yeah. There are times, of course, nowadays with the help of smartwatches mm. and all that, yeah. they, they, keep, they help you keep tabs with, with your health. Yes. And there are times I, my watch will tell me it's yeah. time to stand up. Yes. Does too much sitting have an effect on you? Yes, it has a lot of sti sitting too much or standing too much. Because ah. you see, like, uh, let's say you're like uh, someone who's in like maybe 60 kgs. Mm -hmm. If you sit a lot, all your weight is coming to your back. So, mm -hmm. like, that like the way you're seated, our weight is coming to your back. So, imagine like putting all that pressure the whole day on your on your back. That's why people have like back problems, like, oh, I'm, uh, like I'm ah. a Ngongo, you know, ah. all those mm. things. If you stand too much now, you're putting all that weight on your, feet. on your feet. So you need to balance. So you need to, uh, that's why I'm saying, you see walking, walking like at an eight step, where you're putting the pressure on your body. So you have to just keep active. That's why your watch tells you it's time to yeah, get active. Yeah. Because if, uh, w when you get active, even your blood circulates better. So you find like um, your, your blood is moving to, the, to your legs and everything. And that's why you, you then reduce the the incidences of like even heart attacks and everything. Mm -hmm. Even people in the hospital, uh, people who have had like surgeries or something, they usually to like keep walking, like stand up once in a while so that you can improve circulation. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> whatever you're just telling you, <laughs> it's correct. <laughs> okay, yes. all right, I'll, yes. I'll follow it up. Yes. How do we help people yeah. who are in this category of mm -hmm. people when you're in SEMA? Mm -hmm. No, because mm -hmm. part of preventive healthcare is going for testings yeah. or screening. Yes. When you see there's a screening for cancer yes. or there is a testing for I HIV, yes. there, are, there are various, uh, there are times medical camps are put out yes. to do various uh, preventive healthcare measures. Yeah. How do we help this? small category of people that say, eh, Miss Lizzie Pimwa, unajoyo ni kujijing, simbona ni jameni kama ni kanime ni kano gonjwa? Eh, uh, okay, so church people say like, you know, they are too like, it's, it's either, in any, it, if it's there, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are afraid yeah. of that part. Yes, but it's, you see, like, the thing is, uh, people are afraid of finding out they, maybe they have something. But the truth is, the moment you find it, like, even, like, earlier on, the better the chances of surviving. Because if you come to learn about it later, then it's going to be maybe too late, mm. uh, or maybe it's gonna be like, uh, you're beyond help. Mm. So, um, for example, let me use, it, use, use like this example. Uh, if you are maybe a young man, or a young woman, then you find, out m you find out maybe a HIV positive at maybe your 20s. If you start taking your ARVs like there and then, you have the same uh, life expectancy as someone who is healthy, like someone who is HIV negative. But if you wait, maybe you say like, oh, maybe just like, uh, if you wait, I, I don't want to be tested, then you, you find out way later, maybe the disease you have now progressed. And now you see like you need like an HIV, you, the ability to become like um, uh, what you call um, 
the opportunity defections. So you now start having other things which are like which are on top of what you have. If it's like maybe like breast cancer, if it's treatable, maybe in the first stages you're just going to maybe go for things like chemotherapy. If you wait for maybe way way much later, you are going to have what you call uh, removal of the breast. So you see like if you wait for for too long because you are fearful. What happens to you way later is even more fearful than what is going to happen to you right now. And then you see for things, even if things don't go away, maybe you're going for testing, you're told, oh, maybe you have this disease or you have ABC. Uh, of course, there's going to be some shock, but you know, everything, with time, everything like gets mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. So I would just encourage, uh, like encourage everyone, like everyone, everyone <laughs> to go for, <laughs> for testing, uh, for screening. If you if you hear there's a, med a medical camp, just go there. You never know what you have. You never know what the doctor will tell you. Some people walk around with, their, with hearing problems. They don't even know they have them. You go, you go somewhere, I told, oh, you have a hearing problem, and then you get the right treatment. Others uh, have eye problems uh, like they don't know. So you go for a medical camp, I told, eh, you know, hey, the, your eyes are not uh, working the right way. So you get help. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest like uh, the earlier, the better. And how do we ensure that, mm. at least, especially, mm. what would you suggest mm. would um, help a lot of people be able to also get preventive health care? Because I think one of the major issues you uh, you mentioned mm. was the fact that a lot, a couple of these um, uh, measures could be a bit pricey. Mm. So how do we ensure that mm. even the people who are not well able mm. financially yeah. are able to at least also get to know something okay uh, I think uh, I speak maybe for maybe for okay the people are not well off um, most of it most of the time like you're that's why you're encouraged to take like things like NHIF which are uh, with it like you can go to a public hospital you get those things checked up and everything uh, if maybe it's for your parents or people like who are back at home who don't have money like you can schedule these things like maybe save money for them you schedule mm -hmm. such uh, things for them you take them to the hospital. Uh, especially, I encourage people to take their parents for checkups and everything, mm -hmm. especially their fathers, because you know, men and health, <laughs> men and health, <laughs> they don't go together. <laughs> yes. yes, at least like uh, women, wow, would you do ma? But uh, men, especially our fathers and everything, take them for screenings. Uh, also, if you hear about a medical camp, go for it. Uh, blood donation, you see, like these things you see on the road, people donating blood. Yeah, they do, they, you donate your blood, they do screening for you, they can give you feedback if you want. So go for all those things. If you're in school, uh, I feel like most schools usually have a, a what, like a, they have like um, clinics, and which is most of the time usually free. Use, uh, make use of it. Uh, also don't, uh, if you have m uh, any symptom, you, if you know, like if you feel something is not normal, go see a doctor. In most of the cases, you if you have an HIF or you go to a public hospital, it's not gonna be as expensive as you as you expect. Uh, so, um, and also if you have insurance, uh, which is now the uh, good thing, you can go to hospital which like now do uh, screening and everything. So for example, I work, uh, it's in Hallingham, it's called One Health. We usually do like those insurance screenings. So you come for a full body checkup, you do like, you look at you like, and everything. So uh, I feel like there's something for everyone, depending on, <laughs> depending. <laughs> Depending on your ability, yes, yes, ah, yes, yes. So how, 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 how often should mm. you do routine checkups? If you are below 50, every three years. If you are above 50, uh, once a year. So every year you come for. So mimi nafaa kukua nilianza kuenda? Eh, unafaa kukua naenda. Like, it's just your blood, yeah, like, it's, it's a physical, then your blood and everything. You see, like, your blood, you show us so many things. So. It's a TV. You know, people think it's going to take maybe the whole day. No, it's just mm. going to take like even like an hour you're done. Then you get your results way later. So, um, and also if uh, maybe you have, uh, okay, now if you, are, if you already have like a pre existing, pre -existing co condition, mm. maybe for people with uh, asthma or maybe other conditions, you know, for you it becomes even more frequent. Mm. Because um, the, m the more you do, the more you prevent like mm. future havoc so that's why i'm saying like it's good to prevent than to than to cure that 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 has brought me mm. to mm. A, th a random thought has yeah. crossed my mind yeah. why do you why do you deny people who are ab 
people have a certain weight mm. to donate blood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it has just randomly come yeah. to my mind right now as you're explaining No, that. those ones below or above. Like you see, mm. they, there's a point where they say you're overweight, you can't donate blood. Oh. And the fact that I am overweight mm. should mean that I have blood. No, you see now, that, that as I was, I was speaking about like weight, uh -huh. being overweight comes with a lot of issues. So uh, it's the people who are white like will have so many maybe uh, what you call like body fats. So what you call like just slides and everything. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't want to like now take all that to another person. So uh, weight has a out of issues actually. And if you even look at most of the lifestyle diseases like they all come from weight. So you find someone uh, with a lot of weight they have arthritis because there's too much pressure on their bones and everything. They have hypertension. Uh, they are maybe at risk of getting diabetes, but the ones they lose that weight, all, the, all that goes away. Also, people uh, who are white, like um, I just let me just say that things are not their metabolism is not, is not okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't want, like to take blood from someone and then take it to someone who is already in need of blood and then you add like maybe other problems on them because now if you if you like you take like somebody somebody who has like high cholesterol blood and then give it to someone who is already mm -hmm. sick. No, they are the liver is going to overwork trying to get rid of this cholesterol and trying to get them healed. So that's why I think they, they tell you that. Ah, yes, good to know. Yes, <laughs> at least Melan Kitu, much and will digress from the topic, but yes. Nikalan Kitu. Yes. So, are there categories of preventive healthcare like primary, yes. secondary? Yes, uh, so uh, primary, uh, primary is like I'll say, like it's it's the, it's what like in the community yourself and everything. Secondary would be like now going to maybe those checkups and everything. And then I would say like maybe tertiary is uh, probably like uh, now things like now preventing progression of a disease. So but uh, what you, okay, what I like to do like, like in when it comes to categorizing them mm -hmm. is I, what I, I like talking about like preventing the occurrence of a disease mm -hmm. and preventing like the progression of a disease. Mm -hmm. So that like helps you to like now they have like those two major pathways. Because now one will deal like now with um, avoiding like getting the disease in the first place. Mm -hmm. The other one will deal with if you already have the disease, how do I prevent its progression? Oh. Uh, yes. So in the in the preventing uh, of a uh, disease, that mm -hmm. is where we have things like washing hands. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. covering your mouth when you're coughing. Yes. So in the occurrence of the disease yes. is when now is where you said um, where you said that um, we prevent the disease from. Progressing further. Yes. Ah, I'm a good student. Yeah, yeah very good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why now you, uh, for example, if you have a, let's say you have, you have a, maybe a cough. So now it, it that prevent like maybe the, the progression or maybe like uh, keep giving it to other people, you isolate yourself. So that's also like preventive medicine. So as a person who, if you hear someone else who's coughing, you prevent by avoiding contact with them. Mm. Yes. So that, yeah, that's, I, I think we've got it like very well. Yes. At least, at least we are able to get one or two things yes. for to get to understand. Yes. So, um, as we begin to wind up this mm. conversation, yeah. what do you, what do you wish that um, young people, mm. especially, would take seriously when it comes to healthcare? Um, I wish the one thing they would do is avoid what you call the don't care attitude. So you know, nowadays people are like, oh, life is for the living. YOLO. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, I think one of the major things which are consuming our youth is alcoholism, uh, which is that uh, people nowadays are some, uh, they just say sherehe, aluta, you know, all those things. But what they don't know is that they are, they are like actually functioning alcoholics. Because if you go by the definition by, of the book of an alcoholic, someone who consumes like uh, probably more than, uh, I think it's like, let's say like more than five drinks a week. Mm -hmm. But if you find someone will go to Sharia on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Jalala. <laughs> Jalala. Yeah, so that is going to catch up with you mm -hmm. at one point. Other thing is to reduce the smoking. Nowadays we have so many forms of smoking, una vaping. So una na mtu anaka gangster lakini ya anaka strawberry. So you know those, those vaping <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they, they may not see mapu but they are going to harm you in the long term. Uh, other things is those pe things people put in the, uh, under their tongue, it's called velo, like those, 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 
yeah, yeah, those, yeah, those things. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just in those beginning. Yeah, there are things yeah. people keep in the mind. Yes. Mind. So just uh, prevent, like, pro, uh, refrain from using, right? Do charming your health. Another thing is, uh, uh, if you are maybe sexually active, uh, limit your number of partners. Mm -hmm. If you cannot limit, <laughs> then take other measures. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so like, uh, there's you always been told like use condoms. Nowadays, I'm telling people there is even the what we call prep. Even prep is what we call prep on demand, which is uh, what's prep? Prep is uh, is pre is uh, is pre exposure prophylaxis for HIV. So uh, what it what it does is like you take it's like the normal ARV medication, but now you are taking it at the right sick to prevent like getting an infection. So it's for people who are maybe sexually active, uh, who don't know the status of their partners, or maybe people like let's say people who are in the li that line of work. Uh, also, people maybe um, who are. So it's a dawa you take. It's a dawa you take. It's a pill ah. actually. So it's actually. It's okay, me le shingi di ni agali or I am so clueless. Prep ni ya we actually. Ah. Okay. But now mm -hmm. the ili akutrich na kwa na dawa tatu recommendation na dawa tatu. But now it comes to prep is dawa ngapi dawa mbili. So you take that pill, uh, for uh, like every day. For the moment, so um, okay. Can I explain more? Yes, yes. Okay. You, you are you. Okay, so, so <laughs> you you know I'm also feeling like I've never heard about this. So I would want to hear. Yes. So prep. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, like you take like uh, so if you know like you're going to have an incident like a week from now, mm -hmm. you start taking that pill once a day. So by the time it comes to now, it comes to that one li one week later, mm -hmm. the drug is already in your system. So even if you engage like uh, so you on but on top on top of that you're told to use like protection and everything. So the chance of you getting maybe HIV from someone who's HIV positive is gonna be very, very, very low. So uh that's what that's now like prep. Then you continue a week after, like you are like this uh, what is it like what do you call it? like this dangerous uh behavior has ended. Then we have, no, no, but nowadays we have like, uh, they've done studies on men. It's actually in the guidance for ARVs, the Kenya HIV guidelines. So there's no, now what to call prep for men. So they found like, if for men, if, if you take like uh, that pill 24 hours before, like maybe the incident where you are maybe are going to be exposed, then you take it two days later after you've been exposed. So it's called two and one. So you take two pills 24 hours before, then you take one pill after the exposure, then another, the second day after the expo exposure, is just enough as the one for the one you take one week and one one week after. So it's called uh, th that's what we call prep on on demand. So so let me ask a question. Yes. <laughs> You've introduced a really interesting sec uh, yeah. part of preventive healthcare. I didn't even think about. Yeah. What of those people yeah. who are this is their life constantly? Yes. What do they do? So you continue to prep like the whole time. Your life yeah. is is prep. Yes, I live is prep. So especially, uh, okay, I don't know if we'd like to say this on <laughs> maybe national TV, but you see like uh, if you, you are those ladies like maybe going to sponsor. But maybe you don't know there. Uh, so, so this, this yeah. When you have a sexual partner, yes. but you do not know their status. Yes. But you still want to keep the relationship. Yes. So it's advisable like you start taking prep because you don't know what like lies on the other side so uh or maybe uh if you are m y you know like uh y you know there's some ladies who maybe they are in some relationship like they don't have control over mm. so you don't know where a man does maybe he's very controlling everything mm. it's always safe to take prep because at the end of the day once you are out of that uh risk uh, maybe uh, okay th that risk yeah. uh, season when you, it's it, like you're going to be, have like, preve like pre prevented yourself from getting HIV in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it doesn't prevent from other STDs. So maybe from uh, gonorrhea and all those things. So mm -hmm. it doesn't prevent, but at least the, you know, like gonorrhea and uh, syphilis and those ones, at least, uh, although gonorrhea nowadays has become very tough, but at least for them, they, there's cure, you can get mm -hmm. cure. But now you see for things like HIV, it's very, it's very difficult to, to like uh, like if you get it, there's, it, there's no cure actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This this uh, that has that has brought me because this is a menace affecting particularly young people. Yes. Um, the the there has been an issue yeah. about the other day I was reading about um, 
not HPV. What do you call this? Herpes. Yes, herpes. And people, a lot of young people do not know that herpes does not have cure. Yes. But then they also do not know how do you prevent this? Uh, so, one, like, number one thing is to, is to reduce the number of sexual partners. Because you know the more, the, the more you have, the more partners you have, the more you are risk. Mm -hmm. Then uh, another thing is to know your partner. So, like, I uh, don't say like it's, it's a very bad way, but look at your partner well. Like, if you are doing it, do it in the light. You know, like, because... <laughs> <laughs> it's preventive health care. Yes. So, like, if someone has, like, maybe bumps, you don't know which, where they are coming from, you know, or maybe things like what's, you know, what's like, uh, there are things like, there are probably things you see, like, uh, you see, you, you see them. Mm. So you are not sure what it is then, don't do it. Because even things like, uh, now you brought like about happy then, and uh, maybe love, now uh, HP, which, which causes like genital hearts. Even condoms are not 100% effective when it comes to those two things. And they are caused by viruses. And once you get them, they, you, you're not cured. So you, you, whenever you're under stress in the future, they come back. And they come back even more positive. So what you need to do is like know if there are those things, uh, and if you someone if you see someone with such things, then avoid. Uh, also, if you get if you already like have them, go to the hospital. There's a uh, treatment to, uh, to 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 make them go back to remission, like in a state where you have it, but it's not it's not showing. So maybe for happy there's medication called like for example acyclovir, you can use such medication. For things like quads, you can do maybe things we call like cryotherapy, where we don't know my Baridi, like, because uh, they keep spreading. You know, it's, you know a virus, you may, like, even for a computer, mm. if a computer has a virus, like, the thing keeps spreading, 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 spreading. So, uh, for viral infections like they, for example, like herpes and uh, those things and now what, they'll spread until maybe you get treatment to control them. And if someone you, s you know has them, then you avoid sexual contact with them because you are going to get it. Like, there's no... There's no two ways to it about it. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Preventive healthcare goes yeah. a very long way. I think it's a very broad topic. It's very broad, and it's a, it's it's a, and it, I, I think it's a very, I, I would say a fat topic because it has a lot of things to say. Yeah. Yeah, and people don't know about. It. People just go to the hospital when they are sick, but I feel like uh, preventive healthcare should be like number one because even um, before you go to the hospital, like. You know, we all have tried things before you go to the hospital. For example, if you get a cough, instead of going to buy medicine, you can say, you know, I'm a panado. Like, like, we all know, like, that part of, like, uh, preventing the progression. But I don't think we know well about, like, not getting there at the, at the first place. So you would advise that people mm. don't self-medicate? Uh, I don't advise some, med some medication, actually, because it might be... Especially when it comes to things like flu, people, you see people go to the pharmacy are like, Ni pele ile antibiotic ya siku tatu. That has become very popular. Ama uji sike ile azithromycin ile, you take one tablet. No. Or you send your clone to a piango at home. I think I'm, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sick and when I do, yeah. I, my first option is to go to the hospital. Ah, you see now for you, like at least you go among the people who, who know better. Mm. You know the others, like, they would just say, ah, kuna kale ka dawa nini. But they don't know, like, for example, uh, a flu is caused by a virus, like homa and everything. They are caused by viruses. Viruses don't, most of them don't have a cure, like for the homa and everything. Mm -hmm. What you can just do is control so that your body can be able to fight it like by itself. Oh. So when you take an antibiotic which is meant for bacteria, you're not, you're just, you're not, you're doing nothing. You're just like uh, maybe increasing your chances of getting like uh, anti uh, anti antibacterial resistance and everything. So that's why uh, it's always good like to seek like a uh, professional help. And don't self-medicate, because even the medication you might be having at home might be expired and you don't know. Maybe you come and you know what's the Yeah, so, you do, so it's, not, it's, it's not good to self-medicate. And if you don't, you, you, can't even, you can't afford to go to a hospital. So that's why like, people like pharmacists exist. Because most of the time, like, we are, I would say like, we are the, the first uh, co like, contact people with people who are, you know, if someone gets sick, the first person is a pharmacy. So I feel like, it's always good to ask someone who knows. Because as they say, you can't know everything. Yes. Any other thing we should know? <laughs> ah, so many things. <laughs> 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 there are so many things people should know. Uh -huh. yeah, but I feel like the major thing people should know is that 
always like uh, like take care of your health. Uh, I don't know if it's in economics or I don't know like kuna kitangwa return on investment. Mm. Your body is the only thing like where you get like a very high return on investment. Because if you invest in your body, invest like in good health, you're going to enjoy the, the money you're working for. Because mm. there's no need of like uh, you work for your money, like or you by the time you have to fit in and you're already sick. All your money is going to be spent in the hospital and you're already going to enjoy your money. So always invest your body. As I said, uh, sleep well. Actually, people don't know like sleep is a very, very, very <laughs> important <laughs> thing. I think because your category is sleep well. Because yeah. I'll be coming at which uh, before we finish this yeah. conversation, you need probably to tell us yeah. those of us like me yeah. who are in that category of people that think ah, nikilala three four hours ni kusa. Ah ah ah. That's all now. You know, like chronic sleep deprivation. In a put in, you know, okay. I use this analogy. Miliwako ni kama gari. Your body is like a car. Mm. So, uh, when, when, whenever you have, it, like you have a car, it comes to a point where you, you, you take it for service. Mm. So, when you eh, oil is changed, eh, filters, all those things, then at least now the car is, it, 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 like, it's, um, it's like spanning on the car. The same with your body. So, when you don't sleep, it's, not, it's, it's like you're not changing your oil, it's not like it's like you're not changing your filters, so at one point it's gonna catch up with you, mm -hmm. and that's why if, uh, you find like people say like I'm very young, I have high blood pressure, so you talk about It's because like uh, your body like naturally when it sleeps, it lowers your blood pressure, because that's the time it has to rest. Like that's the time it is removes the toxins and everything. So if you sleep well, everything goes back to normal. Even your hormones like they normalize. But if you keep like stressing it, stressing it, it has uh, there's a hormone you call cortisol. So you, you get like your hormones, cortisol in Mefika, Mefika G. So you start getting anxiety, you start like uh, feeling very tired, stressed, you are sickly, every time you go on a home, you know, like all those things. So get enough sleep. Sleep, uh, but also sleep like uh, is different for different people. Not everyone can sleep eight hours, not everyone can sleep. So there are people who sleep nine hours. So for an adult, like, uh, which I've seen like most of maybe in Zaza, mm -hmm. you need like seven to nine hours of sleep every day. Yes. So seven to nine is there. So is there also um, a, a problem with oversleeping? Yes. What problems? So you see the thing I've, I've, talked, ab like I've talked about cortisol. Uh -huh. So cortisol is, uh, if you sleep too much, it becomes high. Mm -hmm. You sleep too less, it becomes high. And now when you have like high cortisol, that comes with being overweight. <laughs> the, thing that the things I've said about your blood pressure, mm -hmm. feeling stress, feeling sick. Cortisol is actually a stress hormone. So you don't need to sleep too much. You don't need to sleep too less. And then you have to wo you have to have what you call sleep hygiene. So sleep hygiene is make sure you sleep at the same, almost at the same time every day. Eh, <laughs> 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 that's that. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I actually, I'm missing you know, because sometimes my work, like you have to work maybe even night time and everything. Mm -hmm. But your sleep is supposed to be mm -hmm. like uh, you sleep uh, you sleep on time. You sleep on time, you sleep on time, uh, and then you wake up on, like, at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. So if you are used to sleeping at 10, make sure you always sleep at 10, uh, even during the, week, the weekends, so that, your sleep, so that your hormones can know when to, mm -hmm. when to like, uh, how, to, how to function, and, like, be, they can have the normal, the normal sleep, which is needed. You, you see, like, even animals, like, you see, like, uh, we all come from a long history of maybe ancestors and everything. So what happens is like your, our bodies are being programmed like to sleep when it comes to like to seek. That's why you see at animals they sleep at night, mm -hmm. except those ones maybe to go hunting. But what I think is that our bodies have a program, and you have to know how your program works for you. So sleep at the right time, wake up at the right time. <laughs> so yeah. um, almost five. Yeah, I know I said not yeah. yeah. But no, you can what ask causes, questions. What, what causes um? Yeah. See the way you sleep, yeah. then you wake up. Your back is aching. What causes that? Um, number one, Especially I would say. if you've slept for too long. Yes. Number one is the sleeping position. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's, there are those sleep positions you are supposed to sleep. Like, uh, I like it's called the fetal position. You know, like how, have you seen like a picture of a, of a infant in the womb? Yes. The way they look like. Yes. So is it actually that's the best, like you, we put a set, then you sleep on that set. That's the best sleeping position. Because it even helps with the spine. But now you find like people sleep from a uh, like tumbo ju, 
So like in general, mm-hmm. like so if you sleep like that, like you're putting a lot of pressure on you, maybe you sleep on your back. Mm-hmm. So you put a lot of like weight on your on your back. That's why you wake up feeling like your back is very, very sore. So I feel like you should be able to like find the best position for you and always like um sleep like in that position so that like you prevent putting so much pressure on your on your back. Mm-hmm. Also don't sleep too much. So if you sleep too much, uh, sleep for a while, then wake up, then you can go back to maybe mm-hmm. if you want to sleep. Don't be because as I said, like if you sit for too long or walk for too long, like you're putting pressure on there. Mm. Yeah, you remember missing that. Mm. Yeah, so it's all about balance. Actually, it's all about like balancing. Mm. Yes. Amazing. Yes. I think yeah. we are good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have something else you would want to say. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll just say like. Uh, a very good session yeah it's always good to share knowledge with people yeah yes we have learned a lot personally yeah. i have <laughs> learned quite yeah. a number of things you yeah. know yeah. preventive health care is yeah. not just going to be more hiv and uh, you Apana. know screening more cancer Apana. sleeping patterns yes. that's a preventive health care yes. food yeah. what you eat is also preventive health care yes. you know how your hygiene hygiene you know drinking water drinking ah yeah yes so all those yeah. are preventive health care yes. measures yes. which are there are kind of things we overlook, yeah. but they really go a long way in ensuring that someone is healthy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. E, for your time. Yeah. Thank you for Let coming. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. you, you can. Oh, yeah. no, just. That, that's yeah. why I wanted to end yeah. the conversation to yeah. ask you if you have. Yeah. Uh, you would want us to know where your clinic is, and oh. you know, yeah. uh, if you have something else you wanted to say, you can use that. Card. Oh, that one? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. so <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Uh, so I would l- I like to like say hi to my parents, my relatives, my friends. And thank you for watching. And for those uh, who would like to come for health checkups and maybe for more information, you can find us. I usually work at Hallingham, uh, One Health Medical Center in Hallingham. You can come there. We'll be happy to serve you. And thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Michael. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate your time. Yeah, I appreciate you. Okay. Sa, sa. <laughs> that was Dr. Michael Munga. Speaking to us about preventive health care. Did you know that sleeping is also a preventive health care measure and drinking water and watching your weight and exercising? It is not just about kupimo HIV or kupimo diabetes or screening for cancer. Yes, those are secondary or rather they are part of preventive health care. But start with the very basic. How do you sleep? How do you drink water? How do you exercise? Start from there. That was a help. Do not, we are taking a short break, but do not touch that dial. We are coming back on the other end of music and lifestyle.